My name is Singh Kirikli. I am an associate professor of pulmonary and critical care medicine. I am working in a 29 beds ICU of a teaching and research hospital in Izmir, Turkey. Every year, around 1,200 patients are treated in this ICU. Many of them are COPD patients. We always try to treat such patients with non invasive ventilation, NIV. In some cases, however, intubation and invasive mechanical ventilation are inevitable. In order to minimize the complications such as infection, barotrauma, etc., we try to extubate such patients as early as clinically possible and continue to treat them on NIV. Adaptive support ventilation, ASV mode has been used routinely in our ICU for about 10 years, so our staff is experienced in treating COPD patients with ASV. The IntelliVent ASV is a new mode, which is further developed from ASV. It can enable the ventilator to automatically regulate most of the ventilator settings. Refer to the learning module introduction to IntelliVent ASV for details. Over the last two years, we used IntelliVent ASV to treat our patients. Below is a case in which a COPD patient has been treated successfully with IntelliVent ASV. The patient is male, 71 years old, and was admitted to the emergency room due to acute respiratory failure. He had a smoking history and severe COPD for two years. In the emergency room, he was treated with NIV besides other medical treatment. Due to blood gas deterioration, he was intubated and ventilated in pressure assist control mode, and then he was transferred to our ICU. The patient's arterial blood gas analysis indicated severe respiratory acidosis. He had mild dyspnea and tachycardia with a normal blood pressure and was a bit sleepy. His other laboratory values were normal. The patient was treated with IntelliVent ASV immediately. The settings were, PEEP was adjusted manually by the physician in charge, while the settings of percent minute volume in FiO2 were adjusted automatically. The selected patient condition was chronic hypercapnia. In the morning of day 1, 20 hours after initiation of IntelliVent ASV, the patient was awake with a reasonable arterial blood gas result, normocapnia with normal pH. His SpO2 was around 98% with FiO2 of 30%. Sedation was stopped. The routine COPD treatment the patient received included bronchodilators, corticosteroid, antibiotic, anti-aggregant and nutritional support. Then we activated quick wean and SBT for automatic weaning and spontaneous breathing trial. In the afternoon of day one, just five hours after enabling quick wean, the ventilator automatically carried out the spontaneous breathing trial, SBT. Yet the first trial failed because the patient's spontaneous breathing frequency, F-spont, increased above the defined threshold of acceptance. In the afternoon of day two, 54 hours after initiation of IntelliVent ASV, the ventilator delivered the second automatic SBT with success. All monitored parameters stayed within the defined ranges for 30 minutes. The patient could swallow and cough adequately so we extubated him and supported further the patient with preventive NIV. He was discharged from the ICU on day 4 and went home on day 8. In this patient, mechanical ventilation with IntelliVent ASV lasted for 54 hours in total. During this period, we observed that the ventilator automatically and frequently adjusted the ventilator settings. 68 times per day on average, the number of physicians' manual adjustment reduced to one time per day on average. During mechanical ventilation with IntelliVent ASV, we encountered neither hypoxemia nor high pressure nor low tidal volume alarms. This made us think that IntelliVent ASV is safe for patients. In this case, the COPD patient with acute respiratory failure was treated successfully with IntelliVent ASV. We examined our data with conventional mechanical ventilation in such COPD patients and found that the total duration of intubation and mechanical ventilation in this case was much shorter, 54 hours versus average 120 hours. The length of ICU stay in this case was also much shorter, 4 days versus 9 days. During mechanical ventilation, patients' clinical conditions may change very rapidly. Ideally, 
the ventilator setting should always be adjusted properly and in a timely manner. In routine practice, however, this is difficult to accomplish, especially during night shifts or in the centers where the nurse-to-patient ratio is low like ours. In our center, ventilator settings are adjusted on average three or four times a day. This may be the direct cause of delayed weaning and prolonged ICU stay. Automatic setting adjustment with IntelliVent ASV work nicely in this case to solve the practical issue. The ventilator automatically adjusted the settings far more frequently, 68 times a day, leading to reduction of human intervention to once per day. The automation may mean minimization of human errors, due to lack of the required expertise, and timely adaptation of ventilation operation to patients' changing conditions. Quick wean and SBT enabled the ventilator to automate weaning process and SBTs safely and effectively. I think that IntelliVent ASV enables the ventilator to dynamically adapt its settings to the patient's needs and to prepare the patient for fast weaning and early extubation. The automation can unburden ICU staff significantly so we can gain time to deal with other problems of our patients.